So do you ever use Vaseline in your art journal? Vaseline can make for some really interesting resist techniques when used with acrylic paint. So today I want to share with you a beautiful art journal project as well as a few different variations on how you can use this technique in your art journal. So let's get started. So for this project, I'm going to start with the page I've already just cleaned my brushes on often just to start adding paint to my journal. When I'm done one project, I'll clean my brushes on another project. So this is an accordion journal that I made. And so I do have a bit of a extra line in here that I kind of wanted to cover up. So I thought this would be a great one for using for this resist technique. So I've started with Canson watercolor paper, and now I'm going to be adding in a little bit more paint just to finish this background. And I'm going to be using a combination of some quinacridone rose from Amsterdam, um, a little bit of uh, Amsterdam yellowish green, a bit of the uh, turquoise green, and a little bit of the Prussian blue. I like some of these Amsterdam color combinations. I really like uh, the colors that they make and just how they work so well together on my project. So basically all you're doing is taking your acrylic brush and just adding in color. It's kind of nice to add color to something that already has color. It's just going to make the color on top of it just look a little bit more vibrant. I find that with a lot of things is so often when we paint, we think we are going to get everything in the first layer. But I find that actually by adding in those additional layers of paint, that's where these colors really, really shine and take off. And I really like that little bit of yellowish green in there that I already have on this page. So I'm just going to go around it and I'm just going to add in a little bit of color. And so for this project, you could also make a choice not to start with an acrylic background. You could start with uh, some sort of collage or even some paper to start with. The key to it is you want to make sure that your surface is sealed, whether that's with acrylic paint or maybe it's um, with matte medium. If you're working on a collage page, the key to this is you want to make sure that you can scrub the surface without wrecking the paper. And I'm kind of mixing these wet on wet on the page. I'm not worried about having uh, perfect color or perfect coverage or having every color stand out on its own. I actually kind of like the idea of being able to blend some of these colors together. And so some of these areas of the yellowish green, I'm just going to go a little bit more in with it. And those, uh, those little spots there are a little bit of a pain, but that's okay. Um, I was making this book and I was using just regular size paper instead of oversized sheets. So to create the accordion book that I wanted, I kind of needed to uh, have an extra line in there just to make sure that it was sturdy. And this has gone a little dark for my liking. So I'm just going to add in a little bit more of the Quinn Rose and a little bit more of the turquoise green. So I do want this to be a little bit brighter than what it is right now. And that Prussian blue, you don't need to add much. It goes a long way. <laughs> so I'm just going to try to add in some slightly lighter spots in there. I don't want this too, too dark and I want this quite vibrant. I like doing vibrant backgrounds when using Vaseline just because I find that I just end up with a better result because of it. So I went pretty heavy handed with paint on the surface. I'm just going to use my heat tool here and I'm going to let it dry. And I tend to dry not only the front but also the back of the paper that makes sure that you end up getting the paint fully dry because acrylic will dry from the back. So now that your page is dry and you'll know it's dry if it feels room temperature, if it still feels cold, it means you need to dry it a little bit longer. And so now that this is dry, we can look at adding our stencil. I like to have stencils with larger spaces in them. That's going to give you a better impression. Another example that has also worked really well for me is this stencil here because of the brickwork and because of those strong lines that works really, really well. But I'm going to stick with this honeycomb stencil today just because I really like the design of it. And I'm going to be adding in a little bit of Vaseline, also known as petroleum jelly. If you don't usually use a lot of Vaseline at home or in your projects, you can actually get travel sizes of these. And that will actually be better just because then you don't end up with tons that you have to uh, try to find a home for or what to do with it. Because I've done lots of projects and I've barely even touched the surface of the petroleum jelly. So um, take your petroleum jelly. I'm going to call it Vaseline because I'm used to calling it by its brand name. And I'm going to be adding it onto the surface. The key is not to add it everywhere, but just choose some spots that you would like to highlight on your page. And what you want to do is you want to go in a circular motion and just gently uh, slide it across the surface of the page. The mistake can be is if you take like a large glob like that, and you add it, it's going to smear underneath the stencil. Um, it's going to add in a large glob. It's going to be really hard because you're going to end up with smudges and other things later on. 
So the key to this is just uh, adding it in small spaces like this. And you don't want to add it to everything. If you add it to everything, it almost takes away the effect of it, where if you add it in one area, and then I'm going to actually come down here since the stencil covers pretty much the entire page, and add another small area in here, which will look really nice. The idea isn't to cover up the whole page. If you cover up the whole page, you almost lose some of the contrast that you get from this. A lot of these dark areas are just going to sneak through as you add in that extra paint on top. And so that's the one side. And if I hold it to the light, you can see it a little bit there where the shiny areas, that's where I've added the Vaseline. And then I'm going to add in a larger area just up here because I know where I'm going to be putting my focal image. I already kind of planned out this page a little bit. So this gives me a really nice look to this page. And part of the reason I'm sh sharing this with you today is I actually do this a lot for my um, in-person classes. I've shared this a few times and my last class asked me if I'd be willing to share it online. So like, we won't remember everything you taught us. So would you please film it? And I told them I would. So you get the benefit of actually being able to see one of the techniques that I share in my in-person classes. And I do it usually a few um, on Zoom and then in person here in Calgary. So keep an eye out on my website. I will tell you when I have upcoming classes. And that's an opportunity if you'd like to actually learn in person from me or virtually from me, that's another option. So I've added in my Vaseline and now I want to play with adding in a layer of paint on top because the Vaseline will basically sit there as the resist and now we want to add paint on top just to balance this out a little bit. I'm going to stick with basically white and a light blue. I want to stick with slightly lighter colors. I might throw a little bit of this, I think this is a cerulean blue in as well too, but I want to add it only in small areas of the surface. And the key to this is either to use a high flow paint or if you're using a heavy body paint like I am, make sure your brush has some water in it and then basically smooth it out a little bit. Why you need to have your paint a little bit watered down is instead it'll glide over the surface a lot easier and then what this will do is this will prevent you from smearing all the Vaseline that you've just added to the surface. And we want to add in a layer but I usually try not to go super super dark with the color. I kind of like a little bit of that hint of the color underneath peeking through. I personally like that. Um, if you don't like it you could put in a thicker layer of paint but I find that this usually works the best for this technique. I'm gonna mix some of that sky blue with a little bit of that white there, and I'm gonna add it on top. So you can see as I'm pulling it across, you can still see my images underneath. What you're running into is you're not running into having such a heavy layer of paint that it obliterates the image, and that's what you want to avoid. If you basically pull really hard across, all you're gonna do is smear out your Vaseline. And the key to this is just trying not to go too heavy with this. Sometimes I end up going too heavy and then I'm not really happy with the with the final look of it. So a lot of it's just smoothing it out, adding in hints of color without completely removing the look that you want. And you should be able to see little areas of that Vaseline coming on through. The stencils take a little bit more work to really manage them well. Sometimes I find that there can be a little bit of hit and miss with it. The key to this is making sure that you choose a simple shape that you're not expecting it perfect. Sometimes that's the problem is we can go, well, it needs to be perfect and every little bit of the shape needs to be coming through. And the problem is when you do that, you might be disappointed because the color isn't going to act in the way that you think it's going to act on the page. And if you add the paint on thin enough, it shouldn't need much heat drying. You should be able to basically come in and just pull off a lot of your resist. But if you do use a lot of paint, you are going to need something to help heat set it a little bit. I've gone a bit deeper here than I really wanted to, so I'm just going to come in with a little bit of white. Try to lighten up a couple areas here. It's trying to find that nice balance between adding in the color and not completely losing all contrast. So you may want to come with a hair dryer and just add in a little bit of heat. We're not looking at a lot of heat here. We're not looking at completely drying everything, but we need to have it that this paint isn't going to smear really badly once we start removing the resist. So you take a paper towel and you want to test this a little bit as you work. And so I am just going to pull this off very gently. And so you can see because a lot of those shapes are fairly close together and I use quite a bit of Vaseline, it's not only adding in some of these areas, but you're also pulling up in between some of them. So you'll have some of these areas come through completely. 
And that's okay too. That's part of this technique is you're not always gonna get a perfect image. The idea is that you have spots that are coming through. And, and sometimes it's almost better to let it dry a little bit more because then you end up getting some very strong images like this where you can definitely see where it was coming through. And so you can see that some areas have come through with the beautiful centers and everything. Other areas, you're getting more of like a feeling or an idea of the image. And that's just kind of how it goes. So if you're looking for something that's perfect, this may not be the technique for you, or you may just not want to use stencils. You may just want to use your finger. And so I usually go over it first with a paper towel, and then sometimes I'll come through with a baby wipe. And sometimes that will help some of the paint that has started to stick a lot to the surface uh, come up. So some areas have come through a little bit better and other areas that have come through like not quite as well. And so this is where you just need to be careful not to pull up too much of the paint, but be able to play around with the idea that, you know, you have some areas here that are coming through with a little bit of pattern. And I'll show you at the end of this video a couple other examples of this so I can see how I've been able to get different results depending on what I've decided to play with. So from here, we have a few different options is we could look at adding a focal image like this. And I really like this focal image. This is one from Simply Stated Designs I had picked up uh, probably about six months ago. And I love it, but I find that it's in a little bit of competition with the background. So I'm gonna play around with adding in a few layers of napkins and seeing what I can do to have this pop a little bit more to the surface. So I love the idea that he's in a tree. So I could do something as bold as this. But what I find with that is that even though it's going to add in color, it really takes away from all of this really unique color I've already used. Um, I could do something more like this that already has other birds. But the style of these birds is quite a bit different. And I'm not sure if I love where that would end up going, though it wouldn't be bad. So I've decided to add in a piece of napkin and I haven't quite decided how much of the napkin I'm adding in or how I'm gonna add it. Really at this point, this is where you have to start playing around with a little bit of your own creativity. So depending on how the page turns out, this gives you an option to have a few different things going on. I actually wanna take this bird out. This one bird's so different than my other birds that I don't really wanna have him in this and I love having little birds that I can put on other projects. So I'm just gonna take him out. And so that's a nice section there that I think would add a little bit to our background and I'm going to want to remove that bottom edge if you haven't watched my other napkin videos I go into a lot of details on how to manage napkins in your art journal basically all we're doing is getting rid of that harsh edge because that harsh edge is going to show up on our image and so I'm going to add in a section like so that I think is going to look really really nice and you can also choose to rip the napkin I just find that I don't usually get as good results from ripping so that's why I usually end up tracing around them and then from here, all we need to do is add it to our page. And again, I would suggest checking out some of my videos that I've done specifically about napkins. Just to give you just a really quick tutorial here, I like to add it a little bit onto my surface and then work it on. That way I tend to get a lot less issues with wrinkling than I normally would. And add in a section like that. Lay it very gently down, try to flatten it out as much as you can, and then very gently add in another layer on top. So you'll notice that the white generally disappears, but it is going to add a little bit of softness to your page. If you liked where this was going, but you were finding some areas were a little bit harsh, this is a way of just softening up the page a little bit. And this is why I haven't decided just how much of this I'm going to be putting on, just because I don't want to remove all the fun resist areas we've created. I just want to soften them up a little bit so they don't compete too, too much with my bird. And you'll notice that as I went on, I didn't actually, for some of these other areas, put the medium underneath. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I lose track. I also want to make sure I'm not ripping the napkin. So sometimes if I think that there's a chance I might rip the napkin, I just don't do it. And if you find that they have an area that you didn't put enough on, leave it, let it dry, and then add in your extra medium. Once that napkin is wet, if you end up adding that extra medium on, it's going to damage and rip your image. And then you're going to not be totally happy. <laughs> and I'm trying to decide how much more I want to add. I don't want to remove all the background. I think that's my thing. So I'm like, I'm trying to find that balance between like leaving some of the background as is and adding in a few of these images. And because I didn't go all the way to the top here, I don't want it, everything else to be the top because that's going to look really strange, like you've missed a spot. But I really like that butterfly. And so I like to keep him in there. I feel like I'm covering up some of the areas that I like. But you know what? Sometimes if you want to have a certain image on, you have to make that decision of which images get to stay 
say in which images need to go. So I feel like that allows him to stick out a little bit more. Um, the little bit of white there is making a big difference on how the blue jay is going to stick out from the background. So there's a couple things we can do before we add in our image. And one of them is to add in a layer of some iridescent medium. I love this Liquitex iridescent medium. All this medium is, is it's basically just glimmer and matte medium together. And that's, it's quite shiny, but at the same time, I'm actually gonna water some of that down because that's really shiny. But at the same time, then it hides the fact that you have so much white areas. Instead, it makes it feel like it's maybe a little bit more part of it. And I actually feel like that went on almost a little too much. So again, if you feel like you've added a little bit too much, you can always just go over top of it a little bit with a baby wipe and just wipe it out a little bit. And so now I've watered it down a little bit. That looks a little bit better. I'm not sure if it's mica or what they've put into this, but it adds so much shimmer. So it can sometimes almost overwhelm. This is a fun way to add in a little bit of shine to a project. Just by adding one whole layer, it can just add a lot of cohesion to a piece. It's something I've learned in some of the collage classes that I have taken where you might go, well, my piece looks a little bit weird. You would just add one layer of color, one layer of whatever, and it makes a really big difference. So I have a little bit of the sepia India ink and I wanna add in a, a little bit of it to the edges of the page. I don't like aging things too, too much, but I like just adding in like just a little bit of color to the edges. Cause what this does is this is gonna help bring your eye a little bit more to the center of the page. It's light, it's super light. That was the whole point of this is I'm not going on with a huge amount of color. I just wanna to try to almost create a vignetting look to it where it's pulling your eye a little bit more to the center of the page. Basically a drop of this Bombay India ink with a little bit of iridescent medium and a little bit of water. And again, that also picks up a little bit of the textures that we have along the edges here. And that can go a long way. Yeah, just to add a little bit of a focus on this page. It's very subtle, but I personally really, really like it. And so the last thing I wanna do is add in my bird image. And I usually use art glitter glue for this, but recently I got this Yes Paste. And another artist that I follow who does a lot of gallery work with collage suggested this paste and I've been loving it. What I love about it is you need to add almost none for it to really work. And what is amazing about this is that it works on adding this to pretty much any surface. And so I've added it to things that I thought it wouldn't stick to and it's done an amazing job. And so I actually almost have too much paste on the page. And this is where maybe using some art glitter glue, if you're a little less comfortable with a palette knife, might work a bit better for you. But I've been just loving the effect that I get with this paste. I want this guy to come across the page like so. I have a little bit of yes paste that's going past the edges. So I'm just adding a piece of paper towel. I'm gonna rub them in really, really well. That should take any of the extra medium off the edges there. I was being pretty careful. And the nice thing about these glossy images that I get from Simply Stated is you can just go over very lightly across it with your baby wipe and you can just catch any bits of paste that maybe have, have gone over. And so I really love that. I haven't thought about some really good journaling yet for this. That's something I might leave for another day. But I just wanted to show you basically how you can use this Vaseline technique and basically use it to create really interesting backgrounds. And because I am in a folded book, you might go, well, what do you do with all these center areas? I'll actually run a bone folder just along that edge there. And I'm doing that just across my image because what that's going to do, is gonna let my image bend. So even though it's a really high quality image and you don't really wanna damage it, by doing that, it's gonna bend. And then that way you don't damage your image when you need to bend your book. But before we end, I wanna show you a few other examples of how I've used this technique in my art journal. So this is another page I did using this exact same technique. So you can see if you end up using the right amount of Vaseline and you have the right image. Again, this image didn't show up perfectly either. They never do. So the idea is to have add in some really interesting texture that you can basically pull off that extra paint and it works as a really interesting resist. And with this one, I focus on using napkins and then I highlighted those napkins to create a really beautiful journal page. And here's another example that I did with the napkins as well. This one was with a really white napkin. So by being able to add in uh, some darker areas and going over with a lot of white, I was able to not lose my image completely on this page. It's another example of how you can use that resist. 
And then this is another one where I use that same resist technique. Again, each one of them looks a little bit different. I use a lot of the lighter colors on top, a lot of the darker colors underneath, but you can see with the different imagery, um, the different napkins, the different things you choose to use as your layers, this creates a lot of different variation in this one technique. And this is what I did with a black and white napkin. So with a black and white napkin, you get a lot of contrast. So I use that same stencil. I ended up with a slightly better result with some of my honeycomb shapes. But then I went over this again with a much lighter napkin to add in some of the gold areas and then added the black and white napkin over top. So again, another idea on how you can use this Vaseline technique in your art journal pages. I really hope you've enjoyed this technique and it's given you ideas on how you can use this in your own creative practice. There's so many ways you could play with this technique and use it in a lot of different ways. So I hope you give it a try and I would love to know what your comments are about this project. And if you've ever tried this technique before, please leave a comment below because I'd love to start a conversation with you. And if you're looking for any of the supplies that I use today, look in the description below. There I've included all of my materials. And anytime you buy from those affiliate links, that helps support this channel at no additional cost to you. So thank you so much for your support. And as always, if you could like, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. Every time you like a video, that just really helps more people see it, and that really just helps me grow this channel. So thank you so much for your support. And if you'd like to see another video about napkins, click here. This is one I did a few weeks ago about how you can prevent napkins from disappearing in your art journal and goes over a lot of different ways that you can use napkins in your art journal. So I'll see you in the next video.